Hey everyone, in this video we're going to read another short Latin story. So this one's called The Death of Epaminondas. So these stories are coming from H.J. Hardy and his Latin reader for the lower forms in schools. Um, you've heard me use these a lot before in this um, in this playlist, right? Uh, what Hardy calls lower forms, I'm still not entirely sure what he meant by that, um, but I use this more in my Latin 2-3 group, right? Um, because it takes a little bit more advanced um, advanced Latin to be able to read some of like things like subjunctive show up um, that as a teacher, I know my students just aren't ready for it until the sort of middle intermediate part of their Latin career. But it depends on where you are in your journey. If you're a teacher using it, you know, kind of base it against your uh, your own curriculum. If you're a student, um, as long as you understand the subjunctive, I would say that's probably the big thing that shows up here. You'd probably be okay. But either way, these stories are great because sometimes they're mythology. Um, sometimes they're more like fables with a moral and sometimes they're history. Now in this one, um, we're going to be looking at Hardy's description of, of history, right? Epaminondas was a famous um, leader of the Greek city-state of Thebes. Um, if you haven't looked it up, I'd highly encourage you to do that. But under his leadership and as a general, um, he was uh, in the 300s BCE. He helped lead uh, Thebes out of Spartan subjugation. So the Spartans had kind of controlled that area for a long time. He helps break them free of that. And he transforms the city, uh, the city state into a real leading power in ancient Greek politics. So his famous victories um, were over the Spartans at Leuctra and Mantinea. Mantinea is the one that this um, story is based on. And they were major blows to Spartan military dominance. So when you read about the Spartans, they are kind of um, fantasized about in a way that's not entirely correct a lot of the times. Um, and Epaminondas and Thebes are really a, a key part of breaking a little bit of that mystique of, of the Spartans. So again, if you've never heard of them, look them up. Um, there's great resources I'm sure you can find, but he's definitely worth a look. Now, what I've been doing in these stories is reading the story to you all at once just so you have a chance to hear it. Again, not that my pronunciation is anything great, but it'll give you a chance to hear it and listen um, and kind of practice your listening skills. I would encourage you that if you're a student, try reading it on your own. So if you can find a classmate to read it to, right? Work on your own speaking and pronunciation. And then if that classmate can read it back to you, now you can work on your listening skills. Um, both these things would be a great idea just to make sure that you really work on your Latin. You don't ever want to just translate it in your head um, without bringing it to life. That's not the best way to learn the language. So use it for that purpose. The other thing I would say is use the read and reread method. You've heard me say this before, read through the story once, right? And, and but even before you do that, try to pre-read it to understand the vocab. I always say that if you don't know what the words um, mean, it's very hard to actually understand what's going on. So do vocab first. Then when you do read and reread, you read through the story once, you write down any problem areas you might have with vocab, grammar, whatever the case may be, then go look them up, right? Vocab is the easy one to do. But if you can kind of work your way through the grammar as well, um, the second and third and fourth time you read it, you keep doing that method. It should get easier and easier and easier to figure out. And at some point, you want to be able to read through this, understand it all. You don't need any help from vocab um, or grammar and, and you understand what's going on. That's how you know that you've really done well. Um, and you're in a place to move on, right? But again, these stories are great. And hopefully it's just a little something different from your, your traditional Latin curriculum. Um, and also gives you a taste of, of uh, Greek history, which is fun. Maybe it's something you never heard of, okay? So if you haven't done any of those things, pause the video, go do it. But if you're ready to move forward, I'll start by reading it to you. Um, and then we'll translate and kind of read through it together, okay? So the story goes like this. <clears throat> you have Epomenondas, cum mortifero vulnere ad manteneam percusas esset, delatus intentorium ad hoc vivos, dio phantom arcesere volue, ut eum ducem declarare. Comites autem circumstantes illum virum ob acubuisse, acubuisse, dicunt, den de roga ut iolaidum quito vocent, cum vero illum etiam mortum esse, certior esset factus, suis persuaset ut bello cum hostibus composito amicitiam statem facerent. Nullus enim vir inquit epomenondas, inter Thebanos reliquitor, relinquitor, rather, qui nostro uh, executori price. Okay? Now that last word again, exercitui, not the way I pronounced it, but hopefully that gives you a little chance uh, to hear the story um, and listen to it. All right, so I'll pause the video here. And now if you haven't done, like I said, any of that stuff, you want to go do it on your own. But as we move forward, um, we're going to translate it together, right? We'll just take it line by line. So it starts like this. You have Epaminondas, right? That's our, our main character, right? The leader of the Thebans. So when he had been struck, right? Pocusadesse, the Kun Clause setting up the, the subjunctive here. So when he had been struck by a mortifero vulnere, by a deadly wound, right? So something that's going to kill him um, at Mantinea, right? This is the famous um, battle against the Spartans. So when he was struck, um, having been carried into his tent, Adhuk, we was still living, right? Still alive. So they bring him into the tent and he's dying. 
Okay, so he wanted to summon Defantus, right? Defantus is, is one of the, the comrades, basically. So he wanted to summon this person so that he, right, he might declare, declarare, he might declare him duke and leader, right? So he wants to pass on the next person to be leader of the Thebans, okay? Then you continue this line. You have comites autem circumstantes. So you have, however, his companions, his comites. Circumstantes here means like standing around him is really what it means. They said, decod, they said that, and again, you have the indirect statement here, but they said that that man, Akubuisse, he had died, right? So he was dead. So the diophantes that um, Epaminondas is looking for is, is already dead. So that's not going to work. Then you get to the, left, the next line. You have Dende, right? So then or next. Um, Wokend, he, he uh, or sorry, Rogat, rather, he asked that they might call or that they call Wokend, right? Um, Iaulus, right? I Iaulus, right? That's how you'd say that. Um, they quickly call him, right? This other person. Okay, and then it says when uh, Kumer, right? When truly. Um, so here we have an interesting phase. You have Kertior uh, Eset Factos. So it literally means something like he was made more certain. This is an idiom that means like he was informed, right? It's kind of what it means. We see this in different places, but um, that's what the meaning is here. So you can translate that chunk Kertior um, Eset Factos as when he, was, um, when he was informed or literally made more certain, right? That that man, right? Elam, that man also, Etiam, more to him essay, was dead. Right. So when he was informed that that Yavlis here was also dead, he persuaded uh, Suis, he persuaded his own men, right? his men. Right. He persuaded them that uh, when the war was was settled, right, when it was done, um, composito, it's kind of been like uh, settled out. Right. Um, with the enemy. Right. Composibus. So when the war was done, that they fakarent, right, that they might make immediately statum amikitiam right? That they might make peace or friendship. So he keeps calling for people to take over. Everyone's already dead. And he's saying, all right, when this is all done, let's, let's actually make peace with our enemies here. Okay. And then he ends with this, right? The quote where he says, nullus enim weir, for no man, right? Said Epaminondas, no man among the Thebans inter Thebanos, right? Um, was remaining or remained relinquitor, right? Nobody remained who, qui, prisit nostro exercit, uh, who might lead our army. He said, there's nobody left who's going to be able to lead us. So let's go with um, the, the option of peace. Okay, so this is just a fun little story, a little sidebar about um, a famous uh, Greek character, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure where Hardy uh, got this from. I know that when you're looking up um, uh, Epaminondas, you have, um, you know, sources like I think Xenophon is one, um, Cornelius Nepos is another one, but there's different kind of um, authors writing about this man. He's famous, famous, right? He's a really interesting one to look about. Um, but this is just to give you a sense of his death at the Battle of Mantine. And like I said, it's worth looking up if you haven't um, uh, ever heard of it before. Give it a look, right? Learn a little bit more about it. And it'll kind of explain what's going on here with Epaminondas and this whole, um, this whole thing, right? Because he doesn't have anyone to pass his leadership on to. Okay. So hopefully that makes some sense. I know, again, my uh, translation might not be perfect or exactly with what you got that's all right as long as we're on the same track use it as sort of a, a guidepost to feel that you're comfortable and you're um you know that you're in a good place with this and you should feel all right and again the goal you're looking for is to be able to read through this without needing any help so if you can do that you're ready to move on use it as good practice like i said just expand your curriculum a little bit it's probably outside the normal textbook but it's something fun to read that you should be able to handle without too much trouble if you have any uh comments at all or any questions anything put them in the comments below i'm happy to help but otherwise keep at it and good luck